I tweeted I was going to record this video about a month ago. But in the meantime, I've moved house. So I feel like I'm excused for waiting a month with actually filming it. Um, but yes, that's, that's just me making excuses. Let us dive into diminutives. Hello people of YouTube and welcome back to yet another Dutch lesson. We are uh, moving on with our progress sort of stuff. Um, I hope I'm in, uh, in focus, just a small technical note. I can't actually see myself because I'm filming with a camera that doesn't have a flippy screen. Rather annoying, but let's move past that. Today we will be chatting about diminutives, or in Dutch, verkleinwoorden. This is a step in your learning progress of the Dutch language that is important but far from critical. It's one of those things that is useful for more advanced learners that want to sound more native, if you will. It'll kind of add a layer of nuance to your Dutch that um, yeah, may be useful to know about. So what are diminutives or verkleinwoorden in Dutch? Um, diminutives are words, obviously, most commonly nouns with suffixes. And these suffixes indicate that whatever the noun is referring to is small, like in physical size. So let's do an example to dive right into this. The word for the house in Dutch is het huis. If you want to indicate that the house is small, you could say the small house, het kleine huis. What you could also do is make a diminutive out of huis, which in this case would make het huisje. So you get rid of the word small, klein, completely. You add the suffix to the end of the word house, and there you have it, a diminutive for the word house. The small house, het huisje. In the example of the word house, you get the suffix je, j-e. Uh, but there are some other suffixes possible as well, like tje, pje, utje, uh, kje. Um, and there are a few dialect-based ones as well, which I'll give you one example of later on. Not super important. There's also a bunch of exceptions and odd rules related to properly applying diminutives and that sort of thing. We'll get to those in a couple of um, examples that I will give you now. The can, het blik. The small can, het blikje. This is probably one of the simplest ones out there. It just gets the suffix j e blik je the basket de mand the small basket het mandje here you may notice the gender change in the noun all diminutives are neuter so if you have a male or female noun that would normally get the article de if you make a diminutive out of it it becomes neuter so it will get the article het de mand het mandje de monkey de aap the small monkey Het apje. Notice again the gender change. Next up, the oak tree. De eikenboom. Het eikenboompje. The skylight. Het dakraam. Het dakraampje. The boy. De jongen. Het jongetje. Notice here that we have to slightly rework the spelling of jongen to make a diminutive out of it. We skip out the last n to glue on the suffix. De jongen. Het jongetje, no n. The pen, de pen, rather simple. Het pennetje. Notice here that we get a double consonant, a double n. If I were to leave out this n, pennetje would suddenly be pronounced penetje, which just no. A vaguely similar example is the photo. De foto, het fotootje. Notice here the double O, so it gets an extra O. If there wasn't this extra O, it would have been pronounced fototje because it's followed by two consonants. To avoid this and make Dutch, I suppose, more easy to read out loud, you add the extra O, fototje. And another similar example for the sake of repetition, repetition is always good, de peanut, de pinda, het pindaatje double A, because if there was just a single A, it would have been pindatje instead of pindatje. If you want to know more about this pronunciation and vowel combination conundrum, you can click up there and watch a video that I made a while ago on the Polyglot Progress channel about this very subject. And then to get to an example without any weird exceptions, the snake. De slang, het slangetje. 
The only thing you'll notice here is once again the gender change from de slang, either male or female, who knows, to het slangetje, neuter. The bow, de buiging, het buigingje. Notice here that if you have an ng ending, it changes into an nk ending. So de buiging, het buigingje. And I am mildly certain that this is just for the sake of keeping pronunciation. Dutch, I guess, relatively percussive. Instead of buiging je, which is rather soft, buiging kje, which is nice and snappy. This is just speculation, obviously. I have no idea why this letter change exists, but it is a thing. Take it into account. NG becomes NK in diminutives. Another example of the same caliber is for the king. De koning het Koning kje. And now to get to one kind of random accent example of an accent that is not even my own. Um, I have some family in the uh, south of the province of Drenthe, which is in itself just south of my own province, Groningen. The accents are vaguely related because they're all part of the sort of low Saxon family of dialects. Um, anyway, instead of J-E, they use the combination I E, which instead of je becomes e. So instead of saying the dog, the hond, het hondje, they say het hondie, which is just, I just find it funny, but by all means, do forget this. <laughs> Actually, before we move on, if you want to make it proper dialect T, you uh, shorten the het as well, you shorten the article to just an apostrophe T, so it becomes tonti instead of het hondje. Not only nouns can become diminutives, though, you can also pull this trick on adjectives and adverbs. But doing it to adjectives makes them into their own nouns, in a way, and often with slightly different meaning. An example, green, groen, groentje. You can call someone een groentje, and if someone is een groentje at something, they are what I think you call in English a probie, someone who is very new at something and very inexperienced. Hij is een groentje. He's an unexperienced individual. Then we have the adjective for sweet or lovely or nice, which is lief in Dutch. You can add the uh, the common suffix after this, make it into liefje, liefje. Doing this makes the word mean sweetie, like calling someone a sweetie. The Dutch word for small is klein, which I think I established at the start of this video when I used it as an adjective. If you add the suffix to the word klein, kleintje, it means small one. So an example of that could be zij is een kleintje, she is a small one, that car is a small one, die auto is een kleintje. And that is how you can bend adjectives into their own nouns in diminutive forms. You can pull the same sort of diminutive trick on adverbs, and adverbs remain adverbs, but there is a small additional rule, and that is that you have to add an extra s as yet another suffix to the end of the word. So to take the example of the word green again, groen, groentjes, je ziet er groentjes uit, you are looking a bit green. That is what the diminutive factor does to adverbs, making them a bit. So still making them small. You are looking a bit green, je ziet er groentjes out. Then the Dutch word for hungover, um, brak, brakjes. It doesn't necessarily have to mean hungover, it just means being in a general state of physical drabness, which being hungover arguably falls under. Being in a state of physical drabness. Ik voel me brakjes. I'm feeling a bit physically drab. So this could also apply to feeling very tired or a bit queasy, having a slight headache, but yes, also being hungover. Ik voel me brakjes. The Dutch word for soft, zacht. Um, you can change this into the diminutive zachtjes. And this changes it from just meaning soft to softly, but also possibly carefully or quietly. And then the Dutch word for quiet, still, becomes stilletjes quietly. And there you have it, Dutch diminutives. I hope that this was a uh, useful little lesson. Like I said in the start of this video, I feel like it's more useful for further advanced learners than for beginners, but you know, it may be useful to learn about anyway. 
Um, thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to push all the positive buttons down below. Leave a suggestion for a, uh, a Dutch learning topic if you want. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Ciao.